This episode is brought to you by the Air Force Collaboratory. In the future, robots will fly tacos and textbooks into our windows. So I guess leave your windows open in preparation for the future. Anthony here for DNews and drones, man. The internet loves drones, from military applications to the ethics surrounding them for surveillance to Lady Gaga's dress, I guess. There's a different drone story in the news just about every day. And if you've been paying attention, you've probably noticed that the bulk of these things have a similar design. They are all quad rotors. Quad rotors, which are also called quadcopters, use blades to fly like a helicopter, only it uses four sets of them. Two of the blades rotate clockwise, two rotate counterclockwise, and that helps the vehicle stay stable without the stabilizing rotor that helicopters use. Add some inexpensive accelerometers and gyroscopes like the ones in our mobile phones, and you've got these tiny vehicles that are perfect for autonomous flight. What can they be good for? Oh my stars. What are they not good for? Unmanned delivery is a big use. Uh, Australian startups Flirty and Zucal are teaming up to use drones to deliver textbooks to college students. Why don't they just get up and go get them, you ask? I don't know. I think I was off my couch for a total of three hours during my entire college career. So, I mean, I get where they see a market. And if that seems silly to you, a company called Matternet is working on a micro transportation network of quad rotors that could one day deliver medications to remote villages or in crowded cities where time is short and traffic is crazy. The University of Pennsylvania Grasp Lab is using quad rotors to actually build structures remotely. Imagine showing up to a remote location and having a shelter or a bridge built for you already. A team at the University of Tokyo created an all-terrain quad rotor that can change to a wheel or a boat for search and rescue missions. So this drone turns into this wheel to squeeze through wreckage or get somewhere it can't fly, or it can become a flotation device for someone who's drowning. So you can see where a whole network of these guys buzzing around on their own could be super helpful. Our sponsors over at the Air Force Collaboratory were looking for other new ideas for search and rescue quad rotors. This month, the team will take the learnings, code, and research developed over the two months of its Mind of a Quad Rotor project and apply it to a quad rotor in the real world and post their findings on the Collaboratory website. You can head over there to see how well the community ideas turned out. The Air Force Collaboratory got over 1,500 ideas, not just for quad rotors, but for other robotics projects. And the airmen worked with the community over two months to develop a next generation search and rescue microbot concept called the Arachnipede. It's this modular microbot that can be deployed within disaster areas and navigate confined spaces to locate trapped life. The microbot is equipped with a small camera as well as sensors that can detect harmful gases and heat levels. That is a powerful tool for the Air Force pararescue men who will eventually be entering these confined spaces. And in this concept phase, many of the arachnopedes parts will consist of 3D printed material. If you're interested in getting involved, there is one last chance to be part of the Air Force Collaboratory in 2013. The final project, the launch of GPS-2F is still underway, but there is plenty of time to help the Air Force launch its newest GPS satellite in into space. You can check out our video about it or get more info at the Air Force Collaboratory site and help launch an actual GPS satellite into space. Go check that out and subscribe here for more D News. Visit the Air Force Collaboratory at airforce.com slash collaboratory. Work with real airmen to solve some of the Air Force's toughest science and technology challenges. Your idea could change everything.